Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We've survived the first tornado watch. If you listen to today's podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour, which is out now, the afternoon episode, I literally had to record it as like, you know, hail and whatever, cows were going by. No, we did not have a tornado, uh, but uh, thank you for those telling me to stay safe as if it's up to me. It's really up to the good Lord up there. Uh, I hope I haven't been too mean to you. Where's Maddie Pruitt? Help me. Uh, You know, uh, Waco, Texas never gets hit with a tornado, does it? I don't know. Either way, I hope everyone stays safe out there. We did cancel our afternoon pregnancy doctor's appointment because uh, there might be more storms coming we don't know either way a storm oh geez oh, i spilt the oh the biggest tragedy of the day is i almost lost some of my ice cut what can you do a new table and i'm already spilling things yes we braved the storm to get ice coffees but either way i digress the biggest interesting story in bachelor nation to me is what the hell is going on with the bachelorette now you might not think this is a big story you might go dave you're being mean to jen leave her alone. I think Jen's great, but we can't pretend as if she wasn't last minute cast for the show. The show was not cast for her as far as the men are concerned. She was not who they were thinking they were going to get. So she is fill in. But I love this. I love watching. uh, You ever ever see like in hockey, they've got the bench warmer guy who's the like third string goalie who plays in a beer league. And every once in a while, they have to be like, he literally sits in the stands drinking a beer. And if they need him, then he has to run down and put a jock strap on and get ready to go. That's what Jen did metaphorically. She had to put on the jock strap and become the bachelorette. It was not in the cards. If we pretended as if that wasn't the story, I would be gaslighting you by omission if we pretended it's oh no no the show wanted jen well you have to no they didn't she was their emergency pick she was their second parachute they had to pull the string at the last second the show i don't know the order but they wanted daisy or jen or excuse me daisy or maria that's who they wanted now we have a uh, demois who again by the way take this with a grain of salt get your sodium intake take it with a grain of salt here's the deal i think daisy would have been great I think Maria would have been great. I hope Jen will be good, but she didn't make a fantastic first impression. She didn't. I. What do you want me to do? What do you want? What do you want me to do? She didn't make a great first impression. When they were like, "What do you want in a man?" She was like, "Let's take shots." And she was like, "I want a guy with a big, big dick, a personality." What? She said personality, but we we understand the implication, right? So I've shared some of the other content creators, like Dear Shandy podcast, and I've talked about myself about how you just was a bad joke, and people say, "Oh, get over it," and I'm saying. We will, but at the same time, the stink from a bad joke on a first impression on national TV, that's like, you don't, you don't even realize how bad of a first impression you make until that happens. And it wasn't terrible. She's gorgeous. She seems smart as far as we can tell from what she's studying. Um, I don't even, I didn't even know her age. We, we were shuffling. We were like, oh, what's the deal with Jen? We, we didn't know all, it was like when they put the third string quarterback in and you're like, we don't even have his stats ready, right? Well, here's what Demois has to say. They don't have to vet or I probably don't vet their sources. Let's put it that way. So who knows if this source is any good. It's from a few days ago. From Roses Rejected to Rose Redefined, Jen Tran makes Bachelorette history. Uh, An exclusive source tells Dumois, Maria had started the season but had a hard time getting through filming. Now, I object. Objection, your honor. I don't believe the season started. Uh, reality Steve also didn't believe the season started. What the source might mean is they started filming Maria's B-roll, but then if they didn't do it public, if they did it publicly, someone would have seen this. So what the hell could have gone down with, um, with them already starting the season? I don't believe that's true. So at this point, um, we don't know if we can believe anything else from the source. They had to last minute replace her with Jen. That we believe. We do believe there was a last minute replacement, whether it was Daisy or Maria career we're not sure as was you know made aware in the segment with daisy they had the daisy flowers out and everyone was like were they supposed to cast daisy as the bachelorette and of course good morning america accidentally posted like congratulations to daisy which means days earlier they must have already had this in their content schedule same guys competing for maria are now there for jen so it's awkward it's the same as Claire Crowley. You had men like Jason Foster and Blake Moynes and those guys. Zach Clark was with, you had these men were cast for Claire 
Claire goes with Dale. Remember that whole finasco? They leave. Now they are forced, not forced, but now they are dating a new person that they weren't cast for. That's what's going on here. Now, one of our friends, it's all good and love. Our friend in the comment section had left this, which again, we love everybody here. I just wanted to play it. Love you, Dave. Love you too. But this is at least the third time that you mentioned the men weren't cast for her or that they need to recast new men for her or that they're not going to like her or vice versa. I don't know if they're going to like her or not, but I'm just saying they weren't cast for her. If they were like, um, I want a girl who's funny and she's from Canada. We'd go, well, Jen's not from Canada. So maybe that, you know, but it doesn't mean they're not going to like her. She's beautiful. She's, 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 she's on the make. She's, she's mid to late twenties and, you know, in school and all these things. You don't know Jen well enough to know her type, her past dating history. It's odd to assume by knowing nothing about her. You didn't know her age, didn't know she lived in Florida, but you're assuming you know what her type is or what kind of men based solely on their looks would be interested in dating her. No, that is not an assumption I'm making. That's an assumption you're making that I'm assuming that. I'm just saying they these men weren't cast for her. Jen is beautiful and smart and seems like fun. Sounds like a catch to me, so I don't understand the issue. Um, Jen wouldn't be my type in the sense that well, maybe she would be. I don't know. But from what we saw with like the live, you know, I don't know, not for me. Might be for somebody else. Again, she was just trying to be a girl's girl, have fun, and was put on the spot. I totally understand that. Absolutely. So let's go back here to the article. On Monday, March 25th, former Bachelor contestant Jen was publicly named the next Bachelorette. The decision makes Jen the first ever Asian American lead in the franchise. And again, it just sucks that it wasn't even... The Bachelor's decision. It was like desperation. It's like it's it's good that she's the first Asian American league. Should it have taken twenty or lead? Should should it have taken twenty years? Maybe not. I think Kayla was supposed to be the first Asian American lead years ago. Uh, why that didn't happen, I never know. Uh, they just didn't go with her. But at the same time, clearly Jen is their third pick. That's non-negotiable. At the very least, she's their third pick. They might have said Maria, then Daisy, and then they started going down the list, and then they went to Jen. I don't know. The news comes as quite the shock to Bachelor Nation since fan favorite Maria Georges was rumored to be the one giving out the next bunch of red ruby red roses. Reasons as to why Maria wasn't the final choice for the role floated around the Reddit and TikTok universes, which suggests she had turned down the offer. This week, Dumois received the inside scoop. And by the way, I'd love to interview Maria. I'd love it if she was allowed to share her side of things. My guess is the show isn't going to want to speculate on to why Maria said no, because they're not going to want to know that she was their first choice. But it's like, hello, everybody already knows this. Let's hype Jen up. I want to be here. I'm not trying to cut off the head here. I want to be here and support Jen. I think Jen's going to do great, but it might take some growing pains. It might be a messy, messy, you know, beginning to the season because she's just getting it, you know, you know, getting all of the, the, the rust off of it, you know, everything. Uh, Something did go seriously awry with Maria after all, our exclusive source shared. And again, take it for a grain of salt. Dumois shares a ton of content that doesn't share their sources. Um, that, that, that she had the gig and freaked out. Apparently, it was a mutual decision for her mental health for her to step away literally days ago. Her decision allegedly left Bachelor producers in a bind. The source continued, it was a scramble to pull in Jen last minute. Daisy also turned it down. The cast isn't skewed for Jen at all, so it's a bit of a cluster. Despite the change of plans, this upcoming season is sure to be full of fireworks with Jen at the helm. Get your roses ready, Bachelor Nation. I think this will make for a great season. I think, I think Jen would be a better season than Daisy. I don't think Jen would have been a better season than Maria, but I do think from the standpoint of Jen will be fun and silly. I'm not saying Jen's not fun. I just don't think she was funny. I mean, look, the one chance I saw... I saw it, her humor, it bombed, that's all. Maybe she'll surprise us all. Maybe the bar is set lower. I will be watching. And I say this all sort of defensively, not because of that one comment, but because of others. Oh, Dave, this is your chance to support Asian America. What are you talking about? I support the show ad nauseum. I mean, o overly. I don't not watch the show, but I'm, what, do you, what do you want me to do? Pee and piss on your leg and tell you it's raining? No, it was an absolute dumpster fire what went down last week. An absolute dust it, um, dumpster fire. So yes, when the show thinks Maria or Daisy's going to be the lead, they might say, all right, 
it's a 50-50 shot between Daisy and Maria. Uh, Daisy and Maria both want tall men. Jen wants a guy who's five foot seven because she's short. I don't know. I'm just making this up. I'm pulling this out of my ass. The the they'll try to cast for the tall men because that's what Daisy and Maria are looking for. Not, you know, they don't, they're not gonna go, all right, let's cast a guy that's perfect for all of them. No, they're gonna try to play to all of their strengths. With that said, Look, there's only so many single men out there. They're all going to be relatively the same level of douchebag, 20-something, gym buff. Like, they already have these guys, for the most part, in their database. They've got guy. they had Logan Palmer in their database for previous seasons, but he was too young, and then all of a sudden, Rachel's season, they're like, bring them in, boys. So they have these guys sort of on their roster ready to go. It's just like, you know, they're just not going to act on uh, bringing certain guys in if it doesn't fit whatever personally, personality type someone wants. Now, could Jen find her forever guy even though he was cast for someone else? F yeah. She has just as much shot at finding love as everybody else does, which is very, very little. Jen, you would be, you would have a better shot at finding love if you just hung out at the produce section of your local Publix. If you just hung out being like, which avocado should I buy? Men will be like, oh, buy this. You know, yeah, you'd have a better shot. And that's nothing against Jen. That's against the fact that the show statistically just doesn't work out. Now we've got Abigail talking about the diversity problem with Bachelor Nation. Let's listen to a couple of clips of what she had to say. By now, that Bachelor on oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh boy, Tennessee. I've got a whole nother, I've got, I've been listening to my storm watching out. So I've actually got my breaking storm coverage still playing in the background. Yeah, that's right. It's a tornado season, folks. Please don't mind my audio here. I think it's obvious by now that The Bachelor has a diversity problem and I want to talk about it. You know who I am. My name's Abigail and I was born deaf and I went through The Bachelor on Matt James season and then I went on Bachelor in Paradise and I met my now fiance Noah there. And So I'm just going to skip forward because she kind of shares who she is. I just want visibility on these shows and I think there is just so much power in seeing somebody that has a very similar situation, upbringing, experiences and watching them on your TV and kind of figuring out how they navigate the same experiences that we navigate every single day. But where I think the show is missing the mark is they're not letting the storylines or um, the minorities or people with disability kind of just naturally share their story. And it's almost just coming across as tokenizing. And that's kind of how I felt after walking away from the experience of Basically what tokenizing is, it's when an able-bodied person um, thinks that they're being inclusive and almost going over the top about it and controlling the narrative and then patting themselves on the shoulder um, that they were being inclusive. And that's just not really the best approach when trying to share these stories. And the honest truth is my disability is not your show and tell. Like, let me share my experiences the way that I want to. And I understand it's an industry, everybody has to make money, they have to produce a show, but I think I speak for a lot of us that I just think the raw stories from all these people are what we want to see and what we want to hear and not the overproduced. Because the thing with the disability is we just want to be treated equal to everybody else. We're not wanting preferential treatment. And All right. So she says, we just want to be treated equal. We don't want preferential treatment. We don't want tokenism. Look, I get all of that. Absolutely. Will the show sell uh, the fact that Jen's the first Asian American bachelorette to an extent, but also what we're going to learn is that she's a human and she's going to be pursuing love as a human. And we're going to watch that play out the way we did other diverse choices. And that's a good thing. I, I feel slimy even saying that, but that's the truth, right? Is that the one thing we all have in common is that we all uh, bleed red and we all want to find love, right? Don't we? I mean, that's what we all have in common. Uh, I did want to read some comments from people again here from the chat here. Someone said, um, uh, as Stephanie said, uh, uh, let me see if I can read this here. Uh, I'm just saying women don't want to hear men would rather Daisy or Maria over her. I totally understand. Um, it, look at it this way. It's not who I would rather have from the standpoint of who would I rather have at the altar. That's not what, that's not what the conversation is. And I want to make sure everyone understands that. The conversation is who's going to make better TV. Some of the people that are the best people in the world don't make good TV uh, because they're not messy. 
Um, and I'm not saying Maria's me messy necessarily, but she's got the personality type that's not going to take shit from guys. She's going to say super funny things off the cuff. She's very good with her improv, and that does well for reality TV. Jen might do well for reality TV in a Pilot Pete type of way. It might be a messy season. I truthfully don't know. But let's not pretend that she was the first choice is all I'm trying to say. Whether you agree or disagree, she wasn't. She was at the best case scenario, the third choice. And I'm excited to see how she does. I really am. Um, do I think the season's going to go downhill and the ratings will be terrible? No. Do I think she will pull in as many eyeballs initially as Maria? No, I don't think so. I think Maria had the best chance to pull in as many eyeballs and get as much news. Why? Because she had the biggest fan response. Now, could Jen do something so crazy or have such a crazy season that we watch that trailer initially and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Absolutely. In which case the show will do well. No one knew Gary Turner before his season and it did well. Word of mouth will be what sells this season and we will see how it all goes. Let me know what you think. I'll be back later and check out the afternoon Bachelor Rush Hour for more entertainment news. We'll talk to you then. Bye everybody.